Hi, my name's Mark and welcome back to another instalment of the Shaw Whiteboard Sessions. In today's episode we'll be looking at a couple of major factors that come into play when looking at RF interference. We'll be looking at what are often referred to as the two biggest enemies of RF, if you, if you like. And we'll be looking at those in a little bit of detail and how you can avoid them um, going forward. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> RF enemy number one is metal. So I've taken a couple of examples of where metal can come into play with RF interference when setting up a, an RF system. So the first one being receivers inside of a rack. So quite often what we'll see is we'll see people install the entire system inside a rack, so their receivers all mounted inside a metal rack housing, and then they'll attach the antennas to the back of those systems and then close the entire rack up. So the issue we have there, obviously, is that because metal attenuates RF or blocks RF or reflects it, uh, essentially we end up with a situation where those receivers cannot operate as effectively because you're blocking the antennas from actually receiving that RF signal. So really, what you want to do is you don't want to enclose those inside of a rack. If you're going to rack up your systems, ideally you want to get some remote antennas outside of that rack system and maintain line of sight with your stage area. The second most common example of where metal causes problems with RF is large metal objects in general. So quite often at stadiums or large concert venues generally, there can be some large metal structures that can cause us problems um, with our transmission or receiving. So if we take my slightly crudely drawn metal fence here as an example, now this metal fence has holes in it. There are areas where air or light can go through. However, if we consider our RF signal and we, if we consider it and take an example of 500 megahertz as a, as a rough example here, um, transmitting a wavelength of approximately two meters. Now, if that wavelength is larger than the holes of the fence, then essentially your fence may as well be a solid metal structure because that signal is not going to be able to pass through effectively. We're not going to be able to transmit or receive through that metal object or obstacle. So we want to avoid that once again by bearing that in mind and making sure we maintain clear line of sight between our transmitters and receivers and the stage. <laughs> Major RF enemy number two is salt water. So if we cast our minds back just for a second to our uh, science lessons back at school, you'll likely remember being told that the human body is essentially made up of a whole vast quantity of water, and specifically salt water. So bearing that in mind, let's take our crudely drawn stage setup here of a typical venue where somebody might have their performer, um, pre-audience showing up, of course, um, testing the whole wireless setup here on stage. And we have our receivers at the back of the stage mounted in a nice rack, and then we have our antennas with a clear line of sight to the performer. Seems fine, right? Um, but then now let's consider the audience packs in. So we have 500 people here all pack in to watch the show. And all of a sudden our RF receivers are entirely blocked by essentially 500 big sweaty bags of salt water. So you can see how, because that attenuates RF, salt water attenuates RF, you can see how that can cause an issue. One other very, very common application is when we're using belt pack uh, receivers or transmitters. Let's take a conference or a discussion of some variety that's taking place and we have um, some wireless body packs in operation. Now consider if one of those speakers sits down and they then essentially uh, with their body, their salt water built up body, they block the antenna there, we're going to have exactly the same problem that we have with our crudely drawn stage setup that we had earlier. So the clear lesson here is that in both applications, with both the metal issue and with both the uh, salt water issue that we see with RF interference, the clear lesson is to always maintain as much as possible clear line of sight between your transmitters and your receivers and vice versa. 
thank you for watching this installment of the Shaw Whiteboard Sessions. We hope you enjoyed it. For more information on best practice wireless operation in general, please consider attending one of our wireless mastered seminars. They happen on a regular basis. Also, to make sure you don't miss out on the next video in this series, please visit losingyourvoice.co.uk and subscribe there.